What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. First off, I wanna say this before we get into the video. Build your car the way you wanna build it. Just know what you're getting yourself into. Do not build your car based off of what you see on YouTube or on TV. Know your budget and know your family situation. I advise you to ride in a buddy's car if you can, something with some decent horsepower and truly get a grasp of what you're getting yourself into. Too many people go out the first time, pay somebody to build a car, and they get it back, and it's not exactly what they thought. Maybe it's a little too much for you. Some of you guys are seasoned vets. You, you understand this. You've built cars with great success that make a lot of horsepower. I'm just trying to help the community out and get in front of some of these problems with some of the newer guys that are maybe getting into this. All right, let's get to the video and enjoy. One of the things that I want to cover is horsepower with these cars, right? Everybody wants more horsepower. We chase horsepower. We crave horsepower. And let's just be honest. What's the one car that pretty much broke the mold when it came out? Recently. We'll go recently. Because I would say the Terminator, but that's right. The Hellcat. If you didn't guess it, guys, sadly, it's true. The Hellcat was a beast when it came out. Got 700 horsepower in a street car. <laughs> Things are nasty. Well, those cars made a lot of guys want to make a lot of horsepower. And for us Fox Body guys, when you know we used to kinda, kinda back in the day, rule the roads. If you didn't know, Fox Bodies used to run. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not joking. No, it's not a stock Fox Body, but these things would run around with heads, cam, a little shot of nitrous. Really wasn't <laughs> touching it from the factory. Okay, let's just be honest. The Cobra in stock form, the 0304 Cobra, didn't want to see one of these cars with a little shot of nitrous and some sticky tires. Cars started getting faster, and the Hellcats came along, and the new Coyotes, the S550s, all that stuff. I don't really mean to harp, because this video is not to sit here and show love to the Hellcat and the Demon and all that. But let's just be honest, the game changed back then, right? So I got caught up in it as well. I'm like, my Fox body now has to be faster, right? If I wanna go out and compete with these cars and I wanna race with them and I wanna show them that built not bought is still better, I'm gonna have to step my game up and I'm gonna have to make at least probably six, 700 horsepower in my Fox body to outrun one of these cars. You could argue that it really doesn't take that much to outrun one at the track, but that's beside the point. Guys thought that they had to make big horsepower with these cars. So let's talk about that for a second. What are you getting yourself into when you decide that you want to make big horsepower on a Fox body? Well, honestly, guys, a lot. You're getting yourself into a lot. These cars were not meant to handle that kind of power. Now, I understand. I know there are tons of Fox body race cars. They're probably one of the most raced cars out there in the world today. Been going strong that way. But my point is this, in stock form with just, let's say this car right here, right? This, this is a good example. This car's got some suspension stuff done to it. And this motor's capable of making some, you know, pretty serious horsepower. Right now, the way it sits, um, I don't know guys, let's say it makes 450 to the wheels. 450, 500 to the wheels, you would think, that's child's play. A Hellcat makes 700 horsepower. You're right. That car's also built to make that horsepower. These new Coyotes, these new S550 cars with turbos and superchargers are more built to handle that, right? The technology is not just in the engine and transmission. Caleb will tell you, Foxcast Media, you could go throw a 700 horsepower Coyote motor and transmission in one of these cars and you still don't have an S550. The technology is also in the suspension and the rest of the drivetrain on these cars, right? The trash control, all that type stuff. You get yourself into a mess whenever you're trying to make big horsepower with one of these cars and expect this car to drive like stock. I see so many people uh, want to build these cars, right? And they go and they spend a lot of money. I was one of these guys, right? I, I mean, I spent every dime I had trying to make a fast car. Well, this is what can happen. You've already heard the bad, right? You've already heard the sad reality that you're still not gonna have one of these newer cars. It's not gonna be a GTR. Uh, it's not gonna be a, a Corvette, a new Camaro, right? That's not what you're getting. And I think a lot of people have unreal expectations when it comes to that. This is what I wanna say. These cars in stock-ish form, about 350 or so uh, to the wheels or th even 350 at the crank, 
they are fast, fun cars. You have to understand what it is that you've got here, okay? You've got a very fun, very capable car that doesn't have to make a lot of horsepower. Think about this. You can jump in your Fox body if it's stockish, and uh, you can drive this thing to work. You can drive it around, enjoy it. That's what makes them so fun, right? They're cool cars. They're like, they're, they're just a timeless car, if you will. And people respect them regardless. Right, you can roll up on a completely bone stock Mustang and they're gonna give you a little bit of respect. They're gonna look, they're gonna be like, man, that's a cool car, right? So I think a lot of people think, okay, I'm gonna build this car. I'm gonna make five or 600 horsepower with it and people are gonna look even more. They're gonna love it even more. See, that's where we get into trouble. We let the internet build our cars a lot of times. We let uh, peers and people we don't even know basically pick our builds for our cars. Now think about that for a second. It's true. We watch all these people on YouTube and on Instagram that make all this horsepower and they make it look easy. You might not be that guy, right? So if you go out with unreal expectations, chances are you're gonna have a bad taste left in your mouth once it's all said and done. And that's what I don't want you guys to do. You know, when we're younger, without a doubt, we wanna have the coolest cars. Some of my best memories and some of my best times ever have been with one of these more mild setups with these cars. I'm telling you, I used to have a car, we called it Blue Mica. It was a 93 GT, and it had an F cam, some ported and polished stock heads, upper and lower intake. Then finally, actually, one time it was carbureted there toward the end. But the point is, that car was probably one of the most fun cars that I ever had. I love that thing. Man, we raced it. It wasn't so fast that it would kill you, right? Like, you could get it out in the road, you could hit it, get squirrely, catch a gear. And, you know, it wasn't so obnoxious that, you know, people 10 miles down the road could still hear you, right? I'm not discouraging you if you want to build a race car. That's completely different than what I'm trying to say. You know what you want if you're building a race car. But a lot of you guys think that these cars are just as fun and just as easy to drive on the street when they make X amount of horsepower. So look, just hear me out here. Think your plan out. Enjoy your car for what it is. And don't think that you've got to make a thousand horsepower. Don't think that you need to go out and compete with the guys with the new cars. Can it be done? Absolutely. Just understand that it's not as easy as you might think it is. Also, these cars will nickel and dime you to death. Let's say that you've got a build picked out for your car. Let's say you can get your engine done. You either build it yourself or you pay somebody to get you a really hot engine built and a really good transmission. The big issue that everybody tends to forget is what about your rear end? What about your brakes? What about your suspension? What about subframe connectors? What about a roll cage? Oh, did you mind to upgrade your radiator as well? Uh, what about your cooling fans? You start chasing horsepower, and in the end, you're left with a bad taste in your mouth. Maybe your car isn't what you thought it was gonna be. Maybe it's not as fast. Maybe you're still getting outrun by these guys, or maybe it just absolutely broke the bank. Maybe it caused problems at home, right? Like, these things matter. Guys, this is what I wanna leave you with. I'm not telling you to not build horsepower. By all means, if you wanna build horsepower, do it, but research it and know what you're getting into because it is not, not as easy as you might think it is. Uh, please guys, understand where I'm coming from with this. I'm trying to educate the guys that uh, are new to the game, maybe you picked up a Fox body or maybe you just never thought of it that way. The one thing that I wanna leave you with, and, and this is something that somebody told me years ago and it is profound, it honestly, could change some of your lives. Your car is not what makes you cool. That's just the reality. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, wrap this video up, and as always, thanks for watching.